All right, if you have a random orbit sander with sandpaper that won't stay stuck, that just sort of flies off whenever you use it, well, this video is for you. I wanna show you why that happens, not just what to do about it when it happens. Because if you ask online what to do about it, you'll find two main responses. The first being to replace the pad, and the second being to replace the sander. And I'm here to convince you that the problem is not the sander, the problem is not the pad, the problem is you. And it's a technique thing that I learned several years ago. And since then, I've been spinning the same pad for about seven years straight and listen to it. Isn't that magical? The whole way across, it's sticky. But on that note, uh, if you do have the problem, you'll at least need to get a new pad, 10 or 15 bucks, and uh, you might need to rationalize upgrading your sander if you want to. But the sander upgrade is not necessary. The pad is because it's already broken. But what I'm gonna show you today, I think will help you understand what to do about your technique to avoid becoming a problem in the future. So you're gonna be out 10, 15 bucks, but you don't need a new sander. <clears throat> Long story short, you're melting the hooks. Don't do that. The sander is the hook side of Velcro and the sand paper is the loop side. So if we're looking at Velcro, this fuzzy side is the loop side. The rough side is the hook side. This side is plastic and it melts. So we're gonna do just that and take a look under a microscope before and after. All right, here I have a very inexpensive 40-ish dollar microphone. Nope microscope and a sliver cut off of the Velcro. So the bottom would be the loop side, the soft side, and the top, the hook side. And you can see how they sort of hook around and when the hooks grab onto the loops, then the sandpaper sticks. But if the hooks become less hooky, then they uh, don't grab the loops. The loops usually stay loopy. 40 bucks, this is a nice microscope. Oh, that way it's kind of gross, a lot of legs. The hooks are plastic, so let's go ahead and melt them. Here's an angle grinder with a quarter inch bolt and a dowel epoxied and Velcro epoxied to the dowel. Go see the video titled, How to Sand Holes Fast from this channel's early days if you want a 15 minute deep dive into hole sanding. A sacrificial pad, just this double-sided Velcro from that roll we cut up earlier. Sandpaper on that. It sticks really well. I lost it. Okay, now this doesn't stick very well. This is a really exaggerated version of what's happening on the sander. Yeah, I mean, here it's pretty well melted around there. Here's sort of a top view that's not very helpful. Let's do a cross section. All right, so you see fully melted hooks there on the edge and then partially melted hooks, which don't really hold at all. And then the full hooks that have not melted yet in the center of the pad. And so you'll kind of see this on the sander as well. When it, the pad starts going bad, a lot of times, at least for me, the edges started going bad first before the center did. All right, three tips for avoiding the temperature buildup that could cause the hooks to fail. Tip number one, don't keep the sander in the same spot for too long. Heat builds up and will eventually melt the hooks. Tip number two, don't use excess force. That causes heat to build up faster, melting the hooks. Tip number three, don't take the sander and do this to try to gouge sand. There is a strategic way to gouge sand. That would be another video, but that can cause heat to build up in this little concentrated area on the edge. Yes, it's spinning, but the amount of heat that builds up when you're applying a lot of pressure to that little area is considerable and will very quickly melt the hooks. So if you have a ring of the hooks that don't grip the sandpaper, that's probably what you've been doing. I need to sand this panel, it's three boards, so I can feel a ridge. 10 years ago, I would have done this. Bloop, at an angle, and dug in to go ahead and get that smooth. Now there would have been a dip, but there wouldn't be a ridge. Now that I'm old and boring, I'll use 80 grit sandpaper to make sure to flatten the whole top, going slow but steady, and I'll do that as many times as it takes to get this whole thing nice and smooth. 
and that'll take care of the ridge while making sure to not leave any dips. Also, Instagram. Check out my Instagram, Keith's Test Garage. I'm posting some previews of videos in the works. I really like the YouTube comment section. I like the interactions that we have there, but sometimes I wish that we could have some of those conversations before I release the video, or I could include those ideas in the videos. So anyway, check out my Instagram. Let's try and interact on there. But thank you for the wholesome comments that you leave in the YouTube comment section. Uh, it's nice to have some dialogue there and not have to put on a hard hat before entering that section. If you are ever looking for new sanders, I at least want to recognize the differences between these two that I have because they're very different sanders. In a nutshell, the Bosch is less powerful but has great built-in dust filtration. The Makita, on the other hand, this one's a more powerful sander, allowing me to sand faster because it doesn't bog down when I put a little more pressure on it. I can put a little more pressure, move a little quicker, and still avoid the heat. So I'd ultimately recommend the Makita, but uh, if you want to save 20 bucks, 30 bucks, something like that, having a filter that's good built onto the sander, the Bosch would be a good bet. But I'll put links to these two below and a link to the microscope. And so, I think I'm bleeding. Mix it in. Where'd that come from? Not my face. Ah, there it is, correct. Finger, CA glue. Wonderful this time of the year. Well, that's drying. Let's go ahead and get through the talky part of this. So the two Band-Aid solution, I guess the Band-Aid term 